Cardio Tone, East Africa, Uganda, Garden of Eden. Just had my morning breakfast, some fresh fruits, uh, tomatoes that just grew from the earth. Now, um, this May, I'll be bringing uh, my family and a group of people here to East Africa just to show you part of the culture, part of the landscape, the fruits and vegetables, how uh, the people in uh, East Africa live and how it's hospitable. Sometimes we have basic stereotypes of what Africa is like. Now, this is real Africa. Um, it's no safari out here that we're living amongst the animals and all these stereotypes that, these pictures that we have, these strange perceptions of what Africa is like. And this is what Africa is. It's just like this part of Africa, you have the rural area, just the way we grew up in the maybe 1900s, 1930s, uh, and so forth. Also, they have the, um, the hustle and bustle of the city life in Kampala. So just as the world is in the West, you also have the same type of environment growing up areas here in uh, East Africa. Uh, now this, this uh, the reason why I like this part, this reminds me of a, a community uh, right outside of Atlanta called Serenby. Now they're uh, doing the exact same thing that they they've been doing for uh, millions of years here in East Africa. They're figuring out how to live in a uh, urban community amongst, without changing the landscape of nature. So we've been doing it for millions of years. So if you guys have a chance to travel to East Africa or here with me in this May, I'll go and show you how we're actually taking the ideas and concepts from the Eastern world and bringing it back to the West. So it's always, uh, once again, there's no air conditioning here, just fresh air to breathe, and this is what's causing a lot of the health and illnesses here, uh, there in the Western world. So we're going to show you how to go back, but still have access to many other uh, luxuries that we feel that we, we, we desire in the Western world. Once again, this is uh, East Africa, Uganda. This is just a, a small portion of the land that... Um, belongs to uh, my wife and her family. Tomatoes, jackfruit, you name it. I'm showing you about uh, seven, eight, maybe up to 10 different vegetations, crops and everything that are being um, grown just in the, just their backyard, as we say in America, just growing things in your backyard. Also, um, part of the land that we have here, um, we also, Order out some of the land so some of your local farmers grow their fruits and vegetables on this fertile land. So it's all about family and uh, community here in East Africa because the family is everything. They still have that close knit uh, tie into their culture and the, uh, the family life is central here in East Africa. So this is my STEM lesson here in East Africa showing you how science, technology, engineering, is, and math has been used for millions of years here in the uh, Eastern world. Now STEM is a big, huge concept that uh, I'm teaching uh, in uh, America. And as you notice, I taught STEM, science, how we use the cycle of life, vegetation, we learn botany, we learn uh, astrology, we learn uh, archaeology, the, the, the growing of the, the minerals in the earth. So this itself is a STEM lesson for our kids uh, and showing you how they use the technology of shading 
be using as uh, protection from the sun and everything without changing the natural landscape. Also, um, you can also teach math. We can count the different fruits and vegetables that we pick. We can get an idea of how many uh, bananas uh, are yield from one banana tree and how much money. You also pretty much teach uh, economy as well, how you can use on the fertile land for 20, 30, 40 years, one banana plant that yields a fruit or a bunch of fruits and you sell each fruit for a certain amount and you teach them how the uh, economy works. So you can take one plant that is grown for uh, 10, 20, 30 years and still reap the benefits financially of uh, one seed that is probably grown that is planted uh, 10, 20 years ago, so you still bear fruits. That's basic economy as well. So all this is science, technology, engineering, and math. Garden of Eden. <laughs> beans. Go. Beans, fresh beans. Bit. Here we have cassava. Those. This is maize. For us, we call corn. Maize is also what the Native American Indians grew. Maize. We're headed to where the coffee is grown. Go. Okay, here we have the uh, cassava plants. You see the small cassavas growing? And underneath on the same land, you also can grow coffee. These are small coffee plants. And if you notice, we also grow the corn on the same field and also the beans. So you have four different types of vegetation growing on in one area. That's how rich the land is here in Uganda. You see the beauty all the way around. The whole country is completely green, all year long. Notice the rich soil. Have all the nutrients and all the plants and everything that is being grown bring the nutrients right back into the earth. So therefore we have fresh fruits and vegetables all year round. There's four seasons, all seasons you can grow. Some fruits and vegetables grow better in certain seasons, pretty much like anywhere in the world, but there's a continuous growth of fruits and vegetables in Uganda all year round. This tree. Oh, this is coffee, right? Yeah, coffee. All right, here you see the coffee plants again. It's not quite mature enough right now to do the picking, but this is a coffee tree if you wonder where you get your coffee from. Uganda is uh, a great place to grow coffee as well. Okay, if you notice, there's plenty of fresh air out here. So when you get ready to do your cardio toning, I suggest uh, your meditation come out into an open field like this, get the fresh air in. And if you notice, everything is natural that you eat here. So your health and wellness will be really good. Just try the natural diet. Uh, also in Uganda, they have uh, natural dieting. Everything you eat is freshly picked. All the meats that you eat is not processed. So therefore your diet should be extremely good. So here in East Africa, you don't necessarily have to go back and change your diet. Your diet is perfect as is. We're just gonna show you how to cardio tone and work the rest of your body, build your cardio tone, get your morning exercise or meditation in. So you're looking at about 30 minutes a day of cardio tone. All right, if you notice, we also have the Garcia tree. Uh, the Garcia tree, most of your, uh, your cows eat the leaves, also vegetation, the vegetation that comes off the tree, 
So once again, none of the meat is processed yet. Even the cows eat from the natural grass, eat from the natural trees. And so therefore, once we eat the cows, once they're uh, processed, nothing is, uh, no ingredients or anything is added to. So you're getting a purely natural diet. Also, if you notice also that we have the banana trees down here as well. So here in Uganda, you can grow approximately six, seven, or even eight different vegetarians on the same land. The, 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 the land is so rich and fertile. So once again, welcome to East Africa, the Garden of Eden. Is that? All right, here we have the Jambula tree. It actually is a berry tree. See how large it is, see how much, how many berries that it yields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Now this is very important. Uh, most of the time, we never see what fruits and vegetables come from. Now, guess what this is, a pineapple. Generally, in the western part of the world, we think pineapples come from this big, huge tree. But if you notice, here in East Africa, it grows from a small tree, and the pineapple sits right here. So this is uh, the difference in the way it grows here in East Africa, a pineapple. That's a pineapple plant. And this is the uh, pineapple plant, okay? So kids, don't think that your, your food just shows up in the grocery store. It actually grows up on uh, different farms and different types of uh, plantations such as this. Once again, this is the pineapple plant. It's almost feel, uh, fully developed right now. So all it has to do is sit here and mature for a little bit longer. We have all the other fruits and vegetables growing over the pineapple trees. So it provides uh, sunlight, I mean uh, protection from the sunlight and gives it shade as well. It's like yam. Now the yam is really popular among the uh, African Americans. But if you notice, in uh, America, our yam plants only grow about this tall. Here in Africa, you see how large the yam plants are. Uh, of course, the yams uh, grows up underground. You pick them from underground. Uh, now, here in East Africa, the yam plant, this is used also to feed the pigs and the, uh, the uh, chicken as well. So all the even the uh, meats that you eat, actually eat fresh from the fresh from the land as well. So there's no processed food, and, and the chickens and the uh, the cows and the pigs also eat fresh. Now, generally you would think this is weeds, but also you use this to feed the animals as well. So no matter where you go, all the, the uh, fruits and vegetables are natural, also the plant and the uh, things that the uh, the cows and the chickens um, and the uh, pigs eat are also fresh as well. So nothing is being processed here. If you notice over here, the uh, coffee beans. Mm -hmm. Coffee beans. Now, these are more the, uh, mature coffee beans that are on the tree. I showed you the coffee beans earlier. And uh, you see the coffee, the fresh coffee. Now also here in uh, Uganda, East Africa, you also use those. Uh, it's kind of like a little snack that you might crunch on before meals and stuff like that. Coffee. You see the rich dark coffee beans. Once again, now all this is in one small space, and all these different types of fruits, uh, vegetables, and vegetation, and everything is completely natural. All right. Good. Wow. Look at and directly right underneath. Or above the yams, we have the jackfruit. You see the large jackfruits. Now, I've saw a couple of uh, jackfruits in the United States, but so this is where you can get the jackfruit. It's almost like a hanging uh, watermelon, pretty much. See how large they grow up? This is jackfruit, a very popular fruit here in uh, East Africa. You got it. So, down here are some of the smaller ones that you can reach. If you notice, I guess the kids climb up there and grab the jackfruits as well. Okay, as I mentioned before about the vegetation, nothing is wasted. And we're headed to the uh, pigsty 
to show you how we take the, the uh, fruits, the vegetables, and feed them to the pigs. Now, mind you, also, uh, I've only walked maybe uh, 200 yards in the In the Western world, we just finished a, a popular holiday, Halloween. Uh, and the pumpkins are really popular during the Halloween season. Now, this is the pumpkin plant here in East Africa. If you notice, the, the leaves are much bigger. And everything so we also grow pumpkins so pretty much that can be grown in the world can be grown here in East Africa. Uh, last thing there's a canopy of growth that a concept that they use here in East Africa. If you notice there's different levels of growth. You have the fruit the, the trees, you have banana plants, you have the corn or the maize and then underneath, you have the other plants. So there's different levels of growth here at uh, East Africa. And that's, that's one of the most impressive thing about, to show you how rich the, 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 uh, the infertile the land is. Uh, as I mentioned about the canopies, now, if you notice that the canopies are used as shade, even when during the uh, hot seasons or the sunny seasons, the trees are used as a canopy to protect the lower vegetation from burning. So also, during the rainy season, the trees and the larger plants are used to stop washing away the soil and the, and the rich uh, earth underneath. So these are used as canopies Take the lower plants from the sunlight and also prevents them from washing away all the rich uh, minerals and soil, uh, rich soil up under. So there's a uh, natural system that the, uh, the Africans have figured out how to protect the lower plants and also prevents the soil and all the nutrients from washing away on the lower level. So the uh, lower growth and vegetation of the fruits are protected. We here also, like I mentioned before, you can grow different vegetation, different flowers, and everything. Here we have the rose. Never would think that actually that roses actually grew in Africa, but also this is just proof that the land is so fertile that it, it grows any type of vegetation that you have. The rose plant, grow them here. You can pick them yourself and give them to your loved ones. Now the roses are very popular. United States, ah, I guess we have here, we have the mango plant. Uh, we all love mangoes, right? So this is what a small mango plant looks like. Uh, we're gonna go out back and show you some larger mango plants once again. Look at fertile soil, rich nutrients. And over here we ha even have different types of vegetation. You see the hedges. Also another different type of vegetation we got is hundreds of different types of vegetation that grows on the most fertile land in the world. Once again, the rose, smell fresh, grown fresh. No artificial, nothing added to the soil, just naturally rich soil. Let me say somebody's turkey. You know what is really doing big, that? Big holiday. It's because of the red. Yes. You see the red thing? It turns. Okay. So the uh, goats. Okay. Over here we have the uh, turkey. Uh, it's common. You don't think the turkey is uh, native of uh, Africa. It is a native uh, pheasant to Africa. As you can see, the size of the turkey. Now, it won't come too close to me because it sees red as danger. So, it won't come too close to me. But as you can see how large they grow. And also, the goats over here. Uh, like I said, everything is recycled uh, with the goats. They eat the peels from the banana. Okay. 
Uh, just like in the uh, Western world, the uh, chicken and the turkey just eat like uh, scraps of food and everything that grows around in the uh, natural surroundings. So it also helps keep the, uh, the uh, everything recycled again. Uh, also, when we, uh, the animals such as the pigs, the, uh, use the uh, pig urine as pesticides. Also, the uh, once we finish cooking the ash from the uh, the uh, cooking uh, furnaces, we take the ash and use this pesticide. Also, also, um, so that's it. Once again, you got the coffee beans growing right over here. So yeah, we have a different part of Masaka. Also, so you can just see how they uh, start off small. So these are the larger coffee beans. Uh, once they mature, spread them out on a, a piece of cloth and let them dry out. Okay, so you can see the green, how green and pretty they are. Goes through the uh, transformation of green to red to brown. Uh, once they mature to about this color, we lay them out on the uh, cloth and let them uh, cook to the dark brown. Our, our ebony in color. Also, Good. Also, you can see the ghosts, huh? Yeah. These are two females, and you have the one male back here. And they just eat the uh, banana peels and the husk from the other plants. And also, they eat some of the uh, the other vegetation that's lying around. Elephant grass is one big thing that they uh, enjoy eating. You see how robust they become once they eat everything. So, uh, this is just loose here that they come up under, and you know, we just keep them up you know, after they finish eating and everything. So as you can see, these are the banana peels. Once we take uh, the bananas and take the uh, peel off, we just put them in a basket up here to get ready to feed the goats and everything. So they eat the banana peels as well. As you notice on the outside, the green, so they're getting all the nutrition value from uh, the banana peels. And so the goats are really healthy as well. It's right across from the rose plant. We have the popo plant. This grows fruits. This fruit that is sweet. That, now this fruit is rarely seen in the uh, in the Western world, in the United States, anywhere in the West. The popo plant. It's it's a sweet fruit that you actually peel it back and taste the fruit. And this is just right across, like I said. Uh, from the coffee plant, from the corn maize, even the rose bush. This is how rich and furry East Africa is. Hey. I see the young ladies working in the field. Huh? Now this is part of the uh, economy of East Africa. The young people learn to work. Also, they harvest all the fruits and vegetables. Now this is used to pay their, their school fees. So depending on the time of year they might pick bananas and they're taking you now if you notice they eat in abundance here in Uganda in East Africa but they eat a really big meal in the morning now that really big meal is used to fuel their body throughout the day uh, and opposed to in the Western world, we eat a huge meal and we sit down and do nothing. They eat huge meals here, but it's all used as fuel because they're going to go to work and burn all of that fuel. And so that's why they eat really big meals in the morning time. But by the time they use up all the uh, fuel from the food that they eat in the morning, they're ready to eat uh, lunch. But it's not just sitting down. It's one another. Here's the pigs. Pig also, we use the wood to build the uh, pig sty. Wood that is actually grown up on the land as well. See, so these are the pig. Also, what I mentioned about the pig stock, 
and we're digging in now, building a place where we can wash down the, the, uh, the waste from the pigs. It's actually going to come down this, this sump, and it's going to go all the way down here. We're going to have a larger pit that's open and use uh, the, the waste from the pigs as a uh, biofuel. So once again, just to show you how everything in Uganda is just like they've done millions of years ago, how everything is used, everything is cycled from the rainy season to fruit, the food, the vegetables, the way the animals eat. And we recycle that waste from the animals into a biofuel. Hmm. Now, when you think about citrus fruit, you never think about citrus fruit growing in the uh, East Africa or the tropics. This part of uh, the tropics. All right, this is an orange tree, believe it or not. Uh, you can smell it. You can smell the orange uh, scent from the leaves. Wow, a citrus plant. Okay. And right above that, of course, you have another fruit, which is the mango once again. You see how they can grow so close in proximity one to the other. The citrus orange. Yeah. All right. I want to show you something very important. Um, how the banana leaves are used in the cooking process. If you notice these are the green banana uh, leaves. They're used to cover the, the food or even with inside of here you actually have a uh, maybe a chicken that's being cooked and wrapped so it creates its own oven and you can steam food and process it. Okay. all right now we know uh, people are coming up with a lot of uh, cancer in different parts of the world now now here I want to show you something that uh, we don't use microwaves, microwave ovens that are also causing a lot of cancerous uh, cells to uh, be created within the body. Now, right here, of course, we have the bricks that comes directly from the earth. Right here, you have the wood that is used to heat. And this wood is also grown on the land. Now, this is very important. Now, these are banana leaves. They're used you can bake your food, just cover your food, you can process it, you can bake, and it also steams your food as well. So this is used as like a cover for your pot. The only thing that uh, is not grown on land is of course the metal pots and everything. Okay, down here we have the army ants, huh? You see how they, they form their own colonies and working together. One central highway that goes in two. So they travel, of course, uh, chew on the uh, plants and everything, which also help fertilize the ground as well. Uh, the main thing, now we just left a sunny part of Uganda. And as you can see, the clouds are dark over here. So in one section, you might see the sunlight. Then another section, you see another weather, weather pattern with the, uh, with the rain that's about to come. So depending on the time of day, who knows? You might get sunny, you might get rain. All that helps, keeps this uh, part of uh, East Africa really green. Uh, in my hand, uh, this is part of the banana plant. Once it dries, it is also used. Uh, we use it, as, use it as fertilizer as well. So everything just break down to its uh, least common denominator. Uh, it's so big, I'm, I'm kind of speechless. Uh, just can't wait to uh, divide the land amongst uh, our five children. Make sure they, that they always have some land uh, in the motherland to come back and visit them on the portion of. Wow. Okay. 
All right. Now you notice the uh, living quarters here in East Africa. It's very similar to uh, California, Mexico, Arizona. You, the roofing thing, the landscape, uh, and how the uh, buildings are built. All uh, now the the bricks are also made from the land as well. All right. So, like I said once again, just use all the natural landscape to even build your houses and everything here. Yeah. So this is a uh, uh, one uh, living quarter for one family. I can show you how the communalism works. Also, they have a, a small guest house to the left, so some of your locals might rent or uh, live on the same land. So it's still very much the uh, community concept and the, the, uh, the concept of uh, communalism and all the family members stay and, uh, on the same land. Uh, so now the difference, and um, as an African American, we have first cousins, second cousins. That. Okay, let me just say that now this is all just one project that is being worked on was the living quarters. Uh, so when you guys come back with the uh, uh, late May, well, so this is just a work in process. Uh, on the outside, we also plaster the walls, uh, all this is filled in, and uh, we're going to go inside to show you some of the living quarters that you guys will be staying in once you come back with me. Uh, this summer, uh, like I said, late May, early June. So I'm going to take you inside so you can get an idea of some of the living quarters. Okay, this is the inside of the building. Uh, pretty much the building, the guest house. Uh, it's still a working process. Now, uh, we're working on getting the furniture in, but by the time you guys come in, we all this new furniture, the, the sink, and everything. And uh, some of the uh, that we're used to. Uh, we would take these chairs out and just have a regular sofa, dining room set, in the living area. It's like they were for us. Uh, I'm going to go back here to the uh, bedroom and so just show you how the space is when you open. Uh, you notice some of the, uh, the architect at the top. Uh, this is just an example of one of the rooms. Here, uh, some nice and spacious. I have the uh, lines up and all the landscaping up to be taken care of. So we have the beautiful scenery. Okay, now this is the bathing area. So we have some modern-day showers, uh, uh, toilets, faucets, and everything for you. Like I said once again, this is a working process. Uh, progress, man. So, but these are the facilities that you guys will enjoy. You have your car space, and you also have another bag in here. And you can check it. Okay, in the bathroom, you can use some of these questions that you can use on the toilet, the sink, the shower rack, and all the lunches, the toilet uh, holders, toilet tissue holder, and everything. So, like you said, we're going to put up some more facilities here, uh, the showers, everything. So we're running water and everything we have access to. He's that. All right, now this is part of the living quarters. Uh, more like what we would call the the family room. There's some of the water things, the lights and everything. You can put in the system and everything. So like I said, we'll see. Have some of the same luxuries that we used to in this world. So, they, this is the south of the living quarters that we stay in when we come back in this late or early June. All right? Yes, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? How are you doing? Three? Three years. It's been a good Yeah, yeah. this week. Yes. Wow, this birthday is October, November 1st. Yeah, because uh, so we all are familiar with the Irish potato. Uh, you never imagine the Irish potato being grown in East Africa. Now these are Irish potatoes. Now once again, I just want to show you how rich and fertile the land is. 
So right here we're growing Irish potatoes. If you notice that they're growing on the slope as well, so we use every piece of lamb skin. As the water rushes down from the top to the bottom, it's also fertilizing the potatoes. These are Irish potatoes. Hey, Mr. Cardio Tone, Uganda, East Africa, motherland. See you soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.